You're mad. I'm back. Who should Newcastle sign after their Saudi billionaire takeover? Episode 3 of 3. An underrated creative industrious midfielder, the man who replaced Frankie de Jong, the Premier League's second best creator behind Kevin De Bruyne, and the striker who is the top scorer of his domestic league this season. All of these players will feature in this video, so make sure you watch till the end to not only find out who they are, but how Gasparini's system will function with all of these players I've suggested in it. If you want some context to this video, go and watch the first two episodes in this series. In the first, I discuss three potential managerial candidates to take over at Newcastle. And in the second, I look at three players Newcastle should sign, with the other four coming up in this video. So as I said in the first episode, Gasparini likes to use two industrious ball winning midfielders in his 3-4-3 shape. And I think Newcastle should be looking at two new players to completely revamp their midfield. Newcastle currently have Isaac Hayden who should be kept around as he's a decent mid-table ball winning central midfielder who can be used as backup as can Sean Longstaff and John Joe Shelby who offer a bit more technical ability from deep areas so having those three should give Newcastle some added depth. Eric Polgar would be the first man I look to bring in. The Fiorentina central midfielder turned 26 in January and was signed from Bologna in the summer for just £8 million. Polgar is an all-round central midfielder, he's an excellent ball winner as seen as he's completed 2.5 tackles per 90 minutes this season in Serie A which is the same amount as Marcelo Brozovic. Polgar has the ability to stop the opposition being able to break through the middle of the pitch, being able to make sliding tackles to dispossess attackers. This is a vital skill for a central midfielder in a Gasparini system as they will be tasked with moving across to cover the space in the channels left by the advanced wingbacks. Polgar is also an excellent pressing midfielder, able to push up the pitch to allow his side to apply an aggressive press high up the pitch. This should assist Gasparini's style of play as he likes to implement an aggressive man-to-man -man press for which Polgar would fit in perfectly. Polgar would also provide creativity from deep. He's a very good long passer, able to switch the ball with a long pass out to one of the wide attackers which would work well with Gasparini's wingbacks looking to make runs in behind their fullback from deep when the side is set up in their diamond possession pattern. He has great vision when in the opposition's half, able to play low threaded through balls for on-running attackers or lofted passes in behind the back line. This creative ability can be seen as he's completed the second most key passes of any central midfielder in Serie A this season, with 2.7 per 90 minutes. Polgar isn't as young as some of the other players I've suggested and that is because I do think Polgar is a top level player already who can come in and instantly be one of the best central midfielders in the Premier League and at 26 he is approaching his peak and will still be a cog in the midfield for the next 4 or 5 years. I rate Polgar highly which is why I'd give him a current ability rating of 7.6 which is well inside the Champions League level class. He could still improve and does have world class potential in my opinion which is why I'd give him a potential ability rating of 8.3. To partner Polgar I would look to sign Ajax's Lissandro Martinez. Martinez is a 22 year old Argentine who Ajax signed in the summer as a centre back but who has predominantly been playing as a deep line midfielder in the Regista role in Eric Ten Hag's system. Martinez is very pressure resistant, having excellent ball control when under pressure, which makes him perfect for a side looking to build out from the back, as when he receives the ball the opposition will look to aggressively press him, he has the technical ability and composure to be able to move the ball forward without conceding possession. He's also a very good long passer, enabling him to switch the play from deep positions, which is a valuable asset to have when a side is looking to bypass an opposition press. This can be seen as he has 4.1 accurate long passes per 90 minutes whilst only recording 2.1 inaccurate long passes per 90 minutes, showing how good he is at playing these sorts of passes. He doesn't possess the same sort of chance creating ability that Polgar does, having only created 0.9 key passes per 90 minutes in the Eredivisie this season, though this isn't really his main role on the side. His main role is to circulate possession from deep areas and look to work the ball into the final third, which he's able to do with his passing and vision, enabling him to play those incisive passes into players between the lines. He is a very good defensive player as well, as you'd expect from a player who primarily used to play at centre-back before. While was playing for Ajax in central midfield this season, he has made 2.3 tackles per 90 minutes and only been dribbled past 1.9 times per 90 minutes. He has also made 1.8 interceptions per 90, the 11th most of any central midfielder in the league. Martinez has only had two thirds of a season in European football but he has adapted well and I'd give him a current ability rating of 6.8 meaning he's on the cusp of Champions League level. 
but he has the potential to be one of the best deep line midfielders in the world, playing in that Regista role, which is why I'd give him a potential ability rating of 8.7. Partnering Martinez alongside Polga would give Newcastle a midfield double pivot, who are both excellent long passers of the ball, a player in Martinez who is a very good circulator of the ball whilst under pressure, and a player in Polga who is one of the best chance creating central midfielders in Europe. Not only this, but both have great defensive attributes, which is rare for two playmaking midfielders, which would allow Gasparini to use an aggressive pressing system, which he may not be able to do if John Joe Shelby and Sean Longstaff played as a midfield double pivot. Both Martinez and Polgar should be attainable for around £30 million each, which considering players like Declan Rice are being touted around for £60 million plus, and both are a lot better on the board than he is. £30 million sounds like an absolute bargain. As I spoke about in the first episode of this series, Gasparini's system relies on an advanced playmaker playing ahead of the double pivot, or out wide moving into central positions. At Atalanta, this player was Alejandro Gomez, however Newcastle don't really have this sort of player. John Joe Shelby is a very good chance creator and could play this role, but Newcastle should be looking for a top quality player to fulfil this role. The player that I would look to bring in is Norwich's 23-year-old Argentine, Emi Buendia. Buendia has a contract at Carrow Road until 2024, but with Norwich looking like they will get relegated and potentially being hit hard financially by the impact of the coronavirus, Newcastle should be able to sign Buendia for around £25 million. At 23, not only is Buendia an excellent age to be signed at, but he's also statistically one of the best creators in the Premier League. He has completed the second most key passes per 90 minutes in the Premier League, with 3.3 behind only Kevin De Bruyne. He is also creating high quality chances as seen as his expected assist rate of 0.30 is the 7th most in the league, a higher rate than players like Jack Grealish, James Madison and Mo Salah. Buendia is excellent at playing low through balls in behind the defensive line to find an on running forward. This has worked incredibly effectively throughout parts of the season with Timu Puki leading the line for Norwich. An example of this can be seen against Liverpool on the opening day of the season. When Dia receives a ball in Liverpool's defensive third and immediately sees Puki making a sharp run in behind a relatively high back line, from where Brendia is able to execute a precision pass to create the goal scoring opportunity. Brendia is a versatile player able to play a wide role moving into central positions or playing as a centrally advanced midfielder ahead of a midfield double pivot. Playing ahead of a midfield double pivot, Brendia will be tasked with moving in between the lines in order to receive the ball and then transition the attack with a through ball or his dribbling ability. We can see Brendia doing this here. He takes up a position in behind the Leicester midfield, meaning that when a pass is able to be played into his feet, he can turn and dribble with the ball or play a through ball to find Pukki's run in behind the back line. His dribbling ability is just as good as his chance creating ability, as seen as he's completed 3.3 dribbles per game, the fourth most of any player in the league this season. Buendia like Polgar and Martinez behind him would suit an aggressive pressing system which Gasparini likes to deploy. He has completed the most tackles of any attacking player in the Premier League with 2.9 per 19 minutes and the fifth most interceptions with 0.9 per 19 minutes, showing that Buendia would be a key weapon without the ball, just as he would be when Newcastle have the ball. Buendia would be the bargain of the summer at 25 million as he's already one of the best creative attackers in the Premier League, which is reflected by my current ability rating of 7.2, around the same as Madison and Grealish. In terms of potential ability, Buendia could be just as good as someone like Meza Urza was in his prime, which is why I've given him a potential rating of 8.5. Odson Edouard would be the striker I would sign for Newcastle. As I said in episode 1, Gasparini's system requires two deep line forwards who can drop deep from the forward line and move to the point of the diamond shape on their side of Gasparini's 3-4-3 shape. The centre forwards will need to have good hold up play with their back to go whilst under pressure from a centre back behind and be able to link the attack allowing players like the wing back and advanced midfielder to make runs off of him. Edward's hold up play is very good, we can see that here Celtic are playing a pass into his feet whilst he has been pinned by the opposition centre back. His ability to control the ball under pressure and wait off pass to find a non running player is exactly what he and Joe Linton will be tasked with doing in Gasparini's system. Edward also likes to move out to the left channel where he can dribble at the defender, progressing the ball into the box. This can be seen as he's completed 4.1 dribbles per 90 minutes, showing his winger like dribbling ability. As well as this, he excels inside of the box as Edward is a clinical finisher. 
By his expected goals metrics, he should have only scored 17 goals this season, but in fact, he's overperformed this massively, actually scoring 28 goals, meaning he's overperforming his expected goals rate by an insane amount. This is obviously not sustainable at this current rate, but it does suggest that Edouard will overperform his expected goals rate generally, meaning that he's an excellent finisher. He's very composed in the box, he doesn't panic under pressure and is able to control the ball, get it out of his feet and slot it calmly past a keeper. He's especially astute at finishing from the left side of the box, opening up his body and passing it into the bottom corner, in Thierry Henry-esque fashion. Whilst Edouard has looked impressive, he is still unproven at the top level, which is why I wouldn't yet consider him Champions League class and would give him a rating of 6.3 just inside the Europa League class level. However, I do think he can improve massively if he makes a move to the right club, which is why I'd give him an 8.2 for potential ability. He'd probably be available for around £25 million with just two years left on his contract and at just 22, the former PSG youth prospect would be an excellent signing for this Newcastle side. So how would this Newcastle side function in Gasparini's 3-4-3 shape? Well, in possession, Newcastle would look to move the ball forward from the defensive third into the final third through the use of Gasparini's diamond shapes, either side of the system. The wide centre-back Shaw and Kamara would push forward with the ball and look to play passes into Joe Linton and Edouard on either side, who should be able to link with the most advanced midfielder Brandia and the two wing-backs. The two wing-backs, Furpo and Ahrens, will be tasked with breaking the lines by making runs from deep areas, in behind the opposition's full-backs. Polgar and Martinez will sit deep, covering the space left by the advanced wing-backs, but also be tasked with using their passing abilities to move the ball forward into the final third. Brandia will be the side's main playmaker, being given a free row as Alejandro Gomez is at Atalanta, to roam into spaces between the lines, looking to receive the ball and create. Whilst many haven't been impressed with Joe Linton's overall goal scoring this season, he is very good at holding up the ball under pressure and bringing on running players into play, which is a key asset needed to play as a forward in Gasparini's system, moving deep to be the point of the diamond. Out of possession, this side would have the capabilities of using an aggressive pressing style. Edouard and Joe Linton are two excellent pressing forwards, and Buendia in behind ranks as one of the best attacking players in the league at winning the ball back. Martinez and especially Polgar have excellent defensive attributes, whilst the wing-backs have great recovery pace to facilitate Newcastle playing a high defensive line. The three starting centre-backs are all very adept defensively, with Kamara and Shah being the ball-playing centre-backs and the Sales being the airily dominant central centre-back. Newcastle's squad would also have a good degree of depth as well, helping them compete over the course of a whole season. De Jeune and Clark are two decent backup options to have to come in and play a role in that back three. DeAndre Yedlin and Matt Ritchie can both serve as backup wing-backs as well, and in midfield Longstaff and Hayden could come into full positions in a midfield double pivot, while Shelby's creative ability could see him play deep in midfield or in behind the two forwards in the Alejandro Gomez role in Gasparini's side. Almiron and St Maximan are two players who can come in to offer different options in the forward line as well, showing that Newcastle could change their attack and approach if needed. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that three part series make sure you give this video a like and check out some of my other videos in the description below as well. And what he said is, you are a celebrity. So basically what's going to happen is, there's product here. And this is where you end up, right here. If you can communicate this product, you can make money off the product. Because look at Gaga, she's the creative director of Polaroid. I like some of the Gaga songs. What the fuck does she know about cameras?